precision strikes to avoid harming civilians. But Hamas is exploiting our concern for human life by hiding in Palestinian homes, schools, and mosques, and using a Palestinian hospital as the headquarters. It remains one of the most beautiful places in the Middle East, and at the same time, one of the most dangerous. And what is transpiring moment by moment in Israel and Palestine would scare even the hardiest of American souls, as the people there are living with the constant and immediate threat of rocket barrages, kidnappings, and murder. And in this case, it is all part of a mother's concern. Pleasure to be joined here on Midpoint by Paula Stern. She lives in Israel, owns her own company there, and is also the author of a blog entitled A Soldier's Mother, as she has concerns that only mothers know about their children being in the middle of the fray. Paula, are you there? And thank you for joining us. I'm here, and thank you very much for having me tonight. Paula, I know that earlier today we had spoken, and when we had spoken, you had indicated that there were rockets overhead, that there were explosions heard. Tell us what it has been like today. And again, I want to point out, you are just over the hill from Jerusalem, correct? Right. I'm, I'm very close to Jerusalem. I can see Jerusalem from my house windows. Tell and, us what uh, it's been like today. <clears throat> okay, so today is, is day, it's now 8.30 at night in Israel, 8.40 at night. Um, and it's day three of what we're calling Tuk Etan, or I forget the translation into English, but it's a, it's a name that we've given to this operation. Um, so for the last three days, Israel has been hit by well over 400 rockets uh, around the clock, night and day. Um, in Jerusalem, we were hit um, two days ago, and then yesterday there were no rockets in Jerusalem at all, and then uh, about a few hours ago, three hours ago, we were hit again. They, from Gaza, they shot five rockets. Um, three of them were shot down. Two of them landed not far from my home, not in my city, but in, actually in Arab areas. Um, we heard a siren. I was very distressed because it's sort of a mother's worst nightmare to have your kids outside and you don't know where they are. My 14-year-old daughter had just left the house and I wanted to go running after her. My 18-year-old said, no, go in the bomb shelter. He was very calm. He was amazing. I completely fell to pieces. I don't usually. Um, and the siren went on. It felt like a long time. It really was a matter of maybe a minute. And then we heard the boom, which was shocking because we've heard sirens before. Two years ago, there was the, uh, the um, pillar, Operation Pillar of Defense operation, which, like this one, is trying to get the rocket fire to stop. And uh, two years ago, even though we had sirens in Jerusalem, we never heard the boom. This time we heard the, the explosion. Um, a few minutes later, we found out that it was probably Iron Dome, that it's a, a defense system that is now finally covering all of Israel. And uh, it's been amazingly effective in knocking down 90% of the rockets it's aiming for, not all of the rockets. Um, so in the last couple of days, it's out of 400 rockets, it's knocked down, I don't know, probably about 30 or 40 of them, maybe 40. Um, it's in a very advanced system. It's amazing. And uh, we're sort of relying on that for defense right now. When you wake in the mornings and you think of your children and living underneath this wartime scenario, are there times when you fear that this would be the last day? Um, interesting question. Um, I don't think that's a thought that crosses my mind. Occasionally it does. It, occasionally, it's certainly not every morning. There are days when, I, or minutes or something, where all of a sudden I'll think, what if there's a massive barrage of rockets? And that's what's actually happening this time. In the past, they would shoot one rocket, and we would typically find the location where they were launching it and knock out the location. Um, this time they got smart, if you will, and they're shooting whole barrages, 50 in, in a 10-minute span, um, in different directions. They, um, in the past, they usually hit within a 40-kilometer, I, I don't even know miles anymore, so I apologize. Um, what's 40, 40 kilometers? I don't know, 60 miles, maybe? About that, uh, 60 yes. Mi no, maybe it's the opposite. Wait, 100 kilometers is 60 miles, so it's less. Um, and so it's like a 30-mile range, okay? Um, and everyone outside that 30-mile range has been pretty confident that while we're very worried about the people in the 30-mile range, we're not really getting hit. Um, that's gone. And 
in the last three days, they've hit from all the way down in the south to all the way down in the north. There are five million people under rocket fire right now in Israel, and it is literally almost a... I won't say every minute they're firing, but I don't. there are very few hours that go by where there isn't at least one attack, and usually one attack includes a whole barrage. As I said, um, Tel Aviv, which is one of the largest cities in Israel, was hit by 15 rockets today as of a couple of hours ago. Um, Jerusalem, as I said, was hit by five. i got about two minutes left here, Paula. Give us an idea, if you will, because people, again, have never really been in a situation like this. What is the emotional toll? That this takes on you not only as, as someone living there for 20 plus years but as a mother who has children that are in the Israeli army um, there's a whole mixture of emotions there's pride we're very proud of what the soldiers are doing um, we're very worried about them uh, where there was just a missile attack a few minutes ago which um, was a direct hit and two people were hurt and badly hurt and are being treated by army doctors and I'm afraid to think, I have a feeling that they were probably reserve soldiers. Um, I'm very concerned that my oldest son will be called into the Army because he, he twice already he's been essentially called to war. Um, in both the last two Gaza operations, he was there for the, the majority of the time, and I'm terrified he's going to get a call up as well, and of course he would go. Um, pride, fear, worry, um, exhaustion. You, you feel afraid to go to sleep at night because you're afraid what's going to happen. The first thing you do in the morning is sort of check the news and see what was hit. And amazingly enough, this is really some of the amazing miracles that we've had. You know, a, a rocket landed in a nursery school, and the kids had just left there, so they were okay. That happened today. Um, uh, yesterday, a, a missile crashed into the room of a 3-year-old and a 5-year-old. The family had just said they had enough, and they went on vacation further south. And so they were fine. Endless miracles. And uh, up until these two a few minutes ago, for three days and 400 rockets, we'd had no injuries. In the morning, 10 cows were killed from a rocket, and that's it. Um, so, I don't know, tons of emotions, very emotional period in Israel right now. Um, you know, gratitude mm -hmm. that, that mostly we've, we've escaped, mostly unharmed. Tremendous gratitude to the brilliance of the Iron Dome system. Um, an incredible missile defense system. And I am unfortunately all out of time. Paul, I know it's been a very emotional day for you. I want to thank you for sharing some stories with us. We wish that you and your family and everyone stays safe in this very difficult time. Thank you for joining thank, us. Thank you very much. It is a very difficult time, and it is very difficult for people in America sometimes to imagine what goes on on the Israeli and the Palestinian side as well. This is Midpoint, where every day we question everything.